To be clear, this is not a story of sibling rivalry. Because that implies competition, and it's not. She wins every time. She's taller, she's prettier, she's skinnier. My nickname at home is Fatty McFatFat. No, and I'm thin enough, I'm pretty enough, I get out of speeding tickets and backstage at concerts. But where I'm charming and funny, she is hypnotically charismatic. You might not be able to say no to me, but you will sell your soul to China for her. <laughs> uh, growing up, we used to play this game called Hit Me Harder. The rules are simple. You just have to hit the other person harder than she hit you. First person to yell or cry loses. She's four years older than me. This was a really hard game to compete in as a kid. But I quickly learned that as hard as she hit me, she only won if I cried. So I didn't. It was just pain. Plus, if my dad caught me crying, it didn't matter if she hit me in the face with a baseball bat. I had better take it than prove him right that girls are weak. He didn't even want girls to begin with. When my mom told him that he, she was pregnant with me, he was like, a girl? <laughs> We've already got one of those. <laughs> yeah, my dad, he's an accountant with a penchant for Tijuana hookers and Las Vegas showgirls. <laughs> my mom is an uber Mormon housewife who uses the church lady voice even at home and would spend days locked in her room watching Pinky and the Brain. <laughs> We learned quick how to take care of ourselves. I learned how to make macaroni and cheese before I learned how to tie my shoes. But Michelle, she memorized the number of Jeff Gonzalez, a high schooler who lived up the street, who could take her to Del Taco or pick up pizzas. She was getting high school boys to pay for her dinner before she was even old enough to date one. And I was the schnook at home making my own food. Yeah, so if growing up is like, a journey across an ocean from childhood to adulthood, then my childhood is what happens when the cruise liner you're on explodes. And you wind up stranded on some shore you don't know, all tatted clothes and matted hair and driftwood friends named Woody and McNails a lot. <laughs> when Michelle and I hit that shore, we hit it running with the one thing we both knew how to do. Take a hit or give one. <laughs> By the time I was old enough to actually hit her as hard as she hit me, she had learned how to throw different kinds of punches. This was the year that I turned 14, the year that she got expelled from Santa, Monica, uh, Santa Barbara Community College and moved back home. This was the year that she called me at 3 a.m. to be picked up from an intersection two blocks away because she had crashed her car and I spent the night combing glass out of her hair and feeding her ramen, terrified that if she fell asleep, she'd die. Yeah, this was the year that she discovered Hawaii and pot and what it meant to be really stoned all the time. <laughs> the year that she sold all her stuff, including her roommate's couch, and moved to Hawaii with a backpack and half a fishing pole. <laughs> this was, in short, the year that she stepped up her game. I remember going to pick her up at an airport, and she wasn't there. The flight attendant looked at me and was like, well, a Michelle Shoemaker had boarded the plane in Nicaragua and checked into the connection in Colombia, but she had not actually gotten on the plane. She looked at me panicked like I was a rice cooker about to blow. Is this unusual for her? <laughs> No. I called my dad. Crazy didn't get on the plane. We didn't hear from her for five days. She told my parents that she got stuck at the Columbia airport for three days, which is true. She did get stuck in the bathroom for three days. The story, as she later told me, was that she was bringing back some stuff for some friends and maybe took a little herself. 
And so by the time she got to Columbia with its armed guards and drug-sniffing dogs and four check noise, she was a little paranoid. So she ducked into a bathroom and started to flush it. But then when a cleaning lady came in, she totally panicked and took a whole vial of ayahuasca, which if you guys don't know what that is, it's like this crazy powerful hallucinogenic. And so she spent three days tripping. She couldn't get out of the bathroom at the Columbia airport for three days because she couldn't get out of the bathroom at the Columbia airport for three days. And missed my sister's wedding. Yeah. My dad was convinced that she had sold the ticket to someone else and taken the money to travel to Panama. Why Panama? I don't know, but she had done the ticket trick before. My mom was positive, I think your sister's dead or pregnant. Because <laughs> those are the same to my mom. I called the embassy every day, positive that she was in jail or dead. Yeah. Um, but this was, in fact, not unusual for her. When she first moved to Hawaii, when she was 19, she disappeared for five weeks and then called my mom, just resurfaced on some guy's beach house in Maui. In Costa Rica, she would call my mom, hysterical, crying in the middle of the night, and then email a month later that she was in love with an artiste and moving to Guatemala. She'd disappear and then resurface somewhere with a different religion or a new name. <laughs> when she changed her name for the fifth time, actually, I got the email at work. Happy sister name change day! <laughs> this time she said she liked to be called Pi for short because it represented the division of the endlessness of the circle, the, the direct course against all eternity. I don't, I don't think she knows what pi is. And honestly, it didn't matter because pi, as in Archimedes, is P-I. She is P-I-E, <laughs> as in cherry. I, I didn't have the heart to tell her. And... Sure, this was also the month that I got divorced and moved to San Diego and got a new job. But she was a space alien. I couldn't compete. Yeah, I mean, I've changed my name too. I just did it the more traditional way, by getting married. I've never had phases. I've been the same person since I was eight years old. Third grade teachers that weren't even mine remember me. My sister, on the other hand, has life-altering, world-shaking, paradigm-shifting phases. Her phases are like tornadoes <laughs> that drop down on a town out of a clear blue sky, leveling homes and churches and schoolhouses and all, and then just, poof, disappear. She has lived, or her phases have covered 10 years, six names, and five continents. She has lived in Hawaii, Costa Rica, Colombia, Thailand, been deported from France, Ireland, and Morocco. She's been Buddhist and vegan, transhumanist, and yes, even a Mormon missionary. <laughs> Mom was so proud on various drugs and in various countries. She has been renamed Feathered Earth Love, Jaguar Rose, Swan Rose, which was better than Jaguar Rose, Zephydora, Falcon Angel, my personal favorite, Gabriella, and Pantera Isis Electrica. In fairness, Pantera Isis Electrica isn't really her name. It's the name of the three intergalactic, transcendental, divine beings currently living in her body. <laughs> Michelle is roaming the cosmos, and these three are just living there. Yes, my sister is a space alien. <laughs> and it's effing ridiculous to explain on dates. So, what's your family like? Tell me about your sister. Um, she's very well-traveled. <laughs> Pi did have a coming out party. Well, technically, it was Michelle's birthday party, but since Michelle was off wandering the universe somewhere, we did the best we could. 
She wore silver face paint and a cream silk ball gown. She, her makeup looked like what a 13-year-old might think David Bowie would look like as a Martian. <laughs> she answered the door with a silver tray full of crystals and served me one and said, thank you for coming as you are. Um, thanks. <laughs> My mom served tacos from paper plates and told us to dish up our own ice cream because Pi doesn't want cake. After dinner, <laughs> Pai said that she wanted to do something special. So she came downstairs with a feather and a sage smudge stick, more crystals, and a maraca. My mom was standing there holding catchphrase. <laughs> um, I was thinking we could do something different. My mom squinted. You mean like the week? <laughs> A year later, Pai showed up on my mom's door with a belly full of parasites and an Irish fiancé named Bear. <laughs> she weighed 87 pounds and reeked of B.O. Your sister has always looked so good. And then my mom looked at me holding my Coke. But you're happy. <laughs> Yeah, the parasites we got rid of, but the fiancé she kept. We had the wedding at my mom's house, and it was in the spirit of chivalric love and romanticism. Bear wore a leather duster and a sword on his belt and women's leather boots. He just, he just loved the heel. Pi wore a silver velvet dress and a purple cloak. Bear, st Bear stood at the bottom of the stairs, and queued up the Lord of the Rings soundtrack. Dun, dun, dun. And my sister came down all bewildered and wandering, and they played out this scene of like a woodland sprite meeting a roving swordsman, and then led us all out into the backyard where they had an elfin wedding under the stars. <laughs> she set up an altar to Arwen next to the cake. <laughs> Bear cut the cake and served it on a plate and shoved it in her face and she laughed and she cried and she said, the cake is just so important to me because I'm just so traditional like that. <laughs> but that's when it hit me. She didn't see herself as this hurricane of a person. She didn't look at the face paint and the tattoos and the names and think, oh yeah, I am out there. <laughs> she still saw herself as that same little girl, playing dress up and dreaming of her wedding day. Of all the hits, of all the blows, that was the one that made me cry. Because not one of us saw her that way still. Pie and Bear are currently living on my father's couch <laughs> while Bear tries to make it in America. Pie's given up the whole space alien thing and is a DJ instead. DJ Pantera, world famous. DJ Pantera is, in fact, a world famous DJ. He's Colombian and lives in Miami. Not that it matters. She's, uh, she's not actually speaking to me right now. Something about the hat that I wanted to wear to her wedding. <laughs> and a few ill-timed jokes. <laughs> but honestly, I'm kind of okay with that. I'm tired of competing. And it's not that I'm tired of losing. I just, I just don't know how many more hits I can take. Lauren Adams. <laughs>